They are the Minnesota State Patrol's newest crime fighters. Each come with extraordinary skills. The team of six comes highly trained with a remarkable sense of smell. As Abdi Muhammad reports, they will be used to detect crimes that police say have devastating effects on local communities. The State Patrol's newest team of police canines will soon be in the line of duty. These six dogs came from Europe and are undergoing up to six weeks of training. Most of the dogs we select are between 14 to 16 months old. Um, the reason we look for that age is it's kind of the puppy stage, if anyone has their own dogs. Uh, once they're beyond that puppy stage, it's a little easier for their learning and training. There are currently 15 canines working with the State Patrol across Minnesota. The new recruits will specialize in narcotics detection, mainly during traffic stops and not for apprehending suspects. The dogs have been very valuable as far as us intercepting fentanyl, heroin, um, other drugs that are destined for different communities. Um, I think without the dogs, I don't think we'd be as proficient in finding stuff. Um, the, the dogs can sniff through pretty much everything. The new batch of canines demonstrated their skills for the cameras as they quickly sniffed out an undisclosed amount of cocaine hidden in a box. All the boxes we can put food, rubber toys, different distractions that the, the dog has to sniff through. And then when the dog finds that correct box, um, he's rewarded with a ball. None of the new class of canines will be trained to detect cannabis as recreational marijuana has become legal in Minnesota, something that the state patrol anticipated years ago. Our agency decided back in 2018 just to kind of be proactive with our new dogs, so we weren't imprinting on marijuana or cannabis for that reason. So actually when this new legislation passed, we had three dogs to replace. So it was a fairly, not simple process, but instead of replacing 15, we only had three dogs to replace. Soon, Charlie, Robbie, Alex, Johnny, Taga, and Bolo will all graduate from their training to help the State Patrol take a sizable bite out of crime. In Golden Valley, Abdi Muhammad, CCX News. Robsondale police are holding a community meeting about a level three sex offender moving to the city. Izell Robinson served time for criminal sexual conduct in two separate cases. Both involved forcible sexual contact with women. Level three offenders are the most likely to reoffend. The notification meeting takes place Wednesday at 6 p.m. at Robbinsdale City Hall. Police will be on hand to answer questions. The Robbinsdale School Board is considering extending its contract with its busing company for another year. The decision comes after the district experienced what it described as a terrible struggle with transportation in recent years. Robbinsdale Area Schools has a contract with Durham School Services for busing. The district had to cancel bus routes during the 2021-22 school year due to driver shortages. Durham later paid the district more than $600,000 in a settlement for missing routes. District officials say that bus routes are now fully staffed. The school board's transportation committee recommends the district renew Durham's contract. I'm not happy with where this is at. I opposed Durham coming here in the first place. I have been supportive of the administration of being able to provide transportation as my obligation as a board member, not my personal preference. If the board renews the contract with Durham, it would run through 2025. Nearly one year ago, a new water treatment plant in Robbinsdale officially went into operation. The plant not only provides people with clean water, it also helps residents save money on in-home water softening. This week, the city hosted an official grand opening of the facility. So we'll walk through and then we'll start on the back side of the facility, actually. It's not often that you'll see adults on a field trip. There's four different wells that feed this facility. But then again, it's also not often that a city opens a new water treatment plant. And you can see that the water will look kind of like an aqua blue color. This engineering wonder officially went online in November of 2022. And this week, the city allowed curious residents to get an up-close look at every pipe, faucet and valve that makes it function. It took a big giant team to do all this work. This is the largest uh, project that the city of Robbinsdale has ever done. $34.431 million. Monday afternoon. One, two, three. City officials hosted a grand opening celebration to thank the public and the local dignitaries for making it happen. The building looks really nice. This is a really attractive building in terms of water treatment plants. The facility not only provides clean water, but softens it as well. We're removing about 75% of your hardness 
from your water. When the time came to replace the city's older water treatment facilities, the city council decided to build this new water treatment plant with the ability to soften the water, rather than having homeowners do it on their own. It's like I'm saving $7 per month on my salt. I don't have to buy a new water softener and have it installed for $900 in a couple years. And already, residents have taken notice. I've got a bad back and I've had to have uh, the salt delivered, so I've saved that plus the salt. So, yeah, it's been good. Robbinsdale received a low-interest $34 million loan from the federal government to make this happen. So we got a 1% loan. And while even Mayor Blonigan would admit it's an expensive project, this massive building will serve the needs of the city for the next 50 to 75 years. People that aren't even born yet will pay for it and benefit from it. Meanwhile, the city of Maple Grove is doing a water treatment study to soften its water. Engineering officials say they hope to bring forward an analysis on costs sometime in December or January. Maple Grove officials say November 2nd will be a big day for the city. That's when Boston Scientific is planning a groundbreaking for its new research and development campus. The 400,000 square foot campus is planned in the city's gravel mining area just north of Interstate 694, down the street from Lowe's. Boston Scientific chose Maple Grove over sites in Massachusetts and in Georgia. State documents show the company expects to create nearly 200 jobs within the first three years of opening.